Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. Now over the last few months I've been going down to the local Trash and Treasure Market or car boot sale pretty much every Sunday, seeing what sort of bargains I can find. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick video showing all of the tools and bits and pieces that I've been picking up. The first thing is this whole bunch of German or Swedish files. They're all like precision files of different grades, all sorts of files, and that will go in my drawer with all my other files. And I paid four dollars for these, and he also threw in a whole bunch of taps here. And these will be handy because I don't have any of these, they're all either Whitworth or BA or BSP threads. Uh, they're all in fairly good condition, bit of a clean up, and I'll throw them straight in my drawer with all my other taps. And he also gave me these taps here, which I've separated mainly because they've been ground down. It's maybe they were chipped or some sort of attempt to make it a semi bottoming tap, uh, but I'll keep them regardless. Now, I also picked this up for 50 cents. You can never go past a, an extra set of bits. Another 50 cent item here, just another screwdriver to throw in the kit, three millimeter. I also found this switch here. The guy wanted $5 for it, believe it or not, but I got it for $2 in the end. I'll just throw that in my kit with all my other switches. Now, one thing that I found that I was pretty surprised to find was this thing here. It's from Briggs & Stratton. It's actually an RPM meter, a mechanical one. So as you can see, it's made out of plastic. We've got some indicators here. It's called a serometer. Now, the way this thing works is you would place it on your engine, your lawnmower or your whippersnipper or whatever it may be that you're trying to measure the RPM of, and you would just literally turn this dial here and you can see this wire with this yellow, yellow loop starts to protrude and you would dial that out until this wire starts oscillating and when it's at its maximum point of oscillation uh, you would read the dial here and it would tell you the RPM or cycles per second in Hertz down here. Uh, so it's a pretty handy little device that I found. It comes with the original instructions and uh, yeah, I think I might give it a go on my lawnmower and see this thing in operation. We won't be doing that in this video, but um, yeah, I, I got that for five dollars. Won't find them down at the shop. I paid fifty cents for this little brush here. Good quality, old school brush, and um, I'll probably use that for cleaning circuit boards or components Now I got these for two dollars They were brand new still in the bag. You can never have too many alligator clip leads um, So it's good to have a, an extra set floating around. Um, I also found this tuning fork here uh, It says stainless on that side and on this side it says V256 uh, I'm not sure if that's 250 six hertz or not but um, works pretty well just give it a quick tap with this hammer that i picked up for a dollar and there it goes vibrating away anyway pretty cool yeah as i said i picked up this hammer for a dollar the handle was looking pretty shocking when i bought it so i gave it a quick sand and a few coats of marine grade varnish. Um, I didn't use oil because I, did, I just wanted to give it a coat of something and never have to worry about it again, mainly because this head was a bit loose, so I knocked that wedge back down an extra nearly half a millimeter, and that's locked the head in place. So I think it'll give me a few years of use before I have to worry about replacing this handle, which is why I went for the uh, varnish instead of oiling it. 
Now, the guy that sold me these alligator clip leads also had this uh, divider, Toledo divider here. So I picked that up for, what was it? I think it was $3. easier to take it out this way and uh, we've got a rubber boot on here just to protect the tips I'll take that off as you can see Toledo brand number 53 made in Japan so it's a nice little pair of dividers here now, the same guy also sold me these Mitutoyo calipers here. And they're in fairly good condition. Nice and smooth action. The rails feel nice and clean, well maintained. There's a little bit of surface rust here, which I could almost get off with my fingernail. So we'll just give that a quick soak and rub that down but these are in great condition for twenty dollars um, so I'll clean up the case clean the unit up and throw it in the drawer with my other calipers and a few months back I saw a guy selling these here and he wanted a dollar for it so obviously I couldn't say no now the unique thing about these calipers here is that they're made in Germany. We've got the Germany stamp here and it's definitely got a unique sort of um, spring-loaded leaf spring assembly here. Uh, so we've got one spring here which clamps the two pieces in this direction and then we've got another leaf spring which runs along the length there and that pushes this piece up against the um, the calipers here so it's very snug with these leaf springs and it's pretty handy for a quick measurement of something that you don't need too much accuracy on uh, but it also has if you look in closely here it's got increments for the millimeters and the inches for fractions so um, definitely a handy little tool to add to the kit so the next batch of stuff that I've picked up includes a couple of amp meters. I paid $5 for the pair of these. This one here goes from 0 to 60 amps. And this one here goes from 0 to 100. Um, they're used, but uh, in fairly good condition. So I'll throw that in the box with all my other amp meters. I uh, picked up these Venturi style um, compressed air guns here so we can either use this as a blow gun or a vacuum uh, depending on the way we put the valve in the back end here so all you've got to do to do to use this is unscrew the back here and there's a component that's in here this directs the airflow through these holes here so the air, compressed air goes into this end here and it goes through into this main chamber via that hole and it hits this section here and the holes are angled in a certain direction so depending on which way you place that the air will actually blow in either this direction or that direction so you can use it as a blow gun or as a vacuum. Uh, so if we can pop that back in place it's got an o-ring seal on both sides and screw that back on you could even connect a hose to that end there um, to direct to direct the air with whatever material you're trying to blow or suck uh, you can use it for grain powders whatever whatever sort of material you want wet or dry uh, so I picked that up for what was it five or six dollars and I found another one just out of coincidence the next week for three dollars same sort of style uh, same sort of valve assembly in the back there uh, this one comes with a hose I'm not sure how that works the other one's got that hole there as well so we can put another hose in there 
Yeah, maybe it's for directional blowing or precision sucking or something. Uh, I'm not too sure, but um, I'll hook it up to the compressor once I put a fitting on there and we'll have a play around with it. Uh, the next thing I picked up was this chuck here. The guy only wanted a dollar for it, so I couldn't say no. It's not exactly a brand name chuck, I don't think. No, looks like a cheap Chinese one anyway, but for a dollar. It's good to have in the kit. The next thing I found was this hammerhead. Uh, I'll have to get myself a handle, obviously, but uh, it's still in fairly good condition, so I thought I'd pick that up for 50 cents. And these two quick clamps here, uh, picked up for a dollar fifty each, so pretty handy to have around. And I also found this uh, 240 volt industrial 240 volt plug here we're putting cables in those ends and they not only plug together but they screw together as well so that they're mechanically joined and you can't pull them apart uh, so i'll put that in the kit and definitely use that and the other thing i picked up was this six millimeter male to male lead i picked that up for my son's drum kit so 50 cents Save myself a few dollars there. Now, most of the pliers that I'm about to show you were purchased from the local Trash and Treasure or car boot sale. But these two that I've picked up recently were from eBay. Now, there was one seller selling both of these. I made an offer of about $30 for the pair and he accepted my offer. So, there's a nice pair of tapered round nose pliers there and they're a Harry P. Will brand so that'll be pretty cool to add to my ply collection. The other pair that I got were these Nipex angled side cutters or flush cutters. Yeah so they're flush cutters. Nice Nipex branded pliers there. Uh, don't have a pair like that. I've got a similar pair, but not exactly like that. I also found these pliers here. As you can see, they've got a nice profile pattern here on the handles. And I've got a bit of a taper on the nose there. And if we open that, we've got a very fine serration inside the jaws there and a bit of a cutting edge. Um, I've got some stamps on this side here. It says VAC 227. And I can't read that, but I think it says 227 again on that side. Can't see any names on the inside. So that's about it for these ones. Pretty old school pair of pliers, but uh, you won't find these sort of pliers floating around at the hardware store, especially with that profile on the head there. Now, the other pair of pliers that I found were these ones here, again with a pattern on the handles. We've got a flat profile inside here and a nice coarse serration on the back side of the jaws there. Uh, so another pair of old school pliers there. These ones here, just a cheap Chinese needle nose style plier. Um, I have no idea what these sorts of pliers are for with this um, curvature in it. These are LaPointe pliers. I picked them up for $2. And in fairly good condition. Again, no play in there. Spring loaded. And these guys here were $10. Now, I don't usually pay that much for pliers. Generally, I'm paying three to five dollars per pair at the trash and treasure but these ones here stamp van alloy pretty cool pattern on the handles nice spring loaded old school pliers with this um, unique shape to it like a circlip plier or something yeah ten dollars i've paid for these so well worth the buy Especially considering most of them are usually two to three dollars each. I thought I could splurge on a ten dollar pair. 
Now here's another pair that I found. There's a slight amount of play, but it's not even visually perceptible. But you can feel that there's a little bit of play in there, but the jaws stay nice and flush with each other. Uh, there's been ground down a little bit on the tips by the previous owner, but um, other than that, in pretty good condition. Uh, picked these up. I think the guy gave me these because I bought a couple of pairs of some other plies. I also found these elongated low profile needle nose plies here. Uh, these are spring loaded to stay open. Sort of a medium serration on the tips of the jaws there, but that's a fairly long. So that's almost six centimeters long. So there you go. Nice pair of pliers. I think I paid two dollars for those. So we've got some more needle nose pliers here. These are made in Japan. Absolutely no play in that. Almost as good as new. I bought these on eBay. I think these are for removing the rivets on car panels. Uh, just to get in behind the panel and pop the rivet out without breaking them. They're fairly unique, so I thought I'd pick them up. I think it cost me seven or eight dollars or something for those pliers. Um, just another pair of side cutters for a dollar or two. I think I would have paid a dollar for that. And these pinches here. I think I paid a dollar for these. There's a little bit of play there, but for thrashing things around, it's a nice disposable pair. Another old pair of pinches here. And some more, like a duckbill style needle nose plier. These are EA Berg, Sweden. It's got a nice feel to it, nice and tight. Almost no play at all, probably half a millimetre, just over half a millimetre at the tips there. But generally a good quality pair of pliers. And I've got another pair of pliers here. I've also got, oh, I've got this little cold chisel, I think I picked that up for 50 cents. And another pair of pliers with a very fine serration. It looks like it's been well used and worn down. We've got this nice profile cuts and these little dots that they've put in there for a bit of bling. Uh, these ones need a bit of tender loving care, a little bit of play in there, but again, pretty handy, unique pair of pliers. And these side cutters here. Stamped R&D 1250 V, it looks like. Very, like a mini pair of side cutters. Very short, cutting edge. Now, the other pair, the last pair of pliers that I'm going to show you are these ones here. Again, needle nose, very fine, small precision pair of pliers. I don't know if you can see that well, but um, there's some stamps in there if you can read that. I know it says made in USA, but I uh, can't make out the rest. And I also picked up a couple of Torx screwdrivers here. Now the last thing I've got to show you here is this pair of channel lock pliers here. Now these were unique because I don't have a pair with flat jaws. Uh, most of them or all of them were the ones that I have have got serrations in it so you tend to mark fittings when you try and open them or close them uh, especially brass fittings so you have, to have a pair with a flat edge uh, to reduce any marking on anything you want to keep looking good so that's the extent of the bits and pieces that I've been picking up from the local trash and treasure market and um, now I will show you more tools as I go along. Generally I go to the Trash and Treasure on a Sunday morning 
and if I have time on Saturdays I head down to the scrapyard so I think the next video might be about the parts that I've been salvaging from the scrapyard uh, but we'll probably end up doing a dedicated video just on pliers I'm building an extension to my plier rack because of the high rate of accumulation of pliers so once I've finished increasing the size of that rack I might do a video on the rack and all the different pliers that I've got but I find it handy to have the right pair of pliers for the job so until then thanks for watching please subscribe and leave your comments